Resident Evil 7 is the 22nd game in the Resident Evil franchise and pits you against your most frightening foes yet, a redneck family from the south. This iteration paints somewhat of a return to roots for the franchise, after the last couple games went all in on the overtuned schlocky action side of it, as this truly takes place in an evil residence, full of residents who are evil. Curiously, it carries the subtitle Biohazard, the very same title the series has in Japan, though it's not much more Biohazard than any other of the games. It might just be a Japanese thing to make the original Japanese title a subtitle in the West for the seventh iteration of a long-running franchise. Ethan Winters, professional husband, travels to the least creepy looking house in Louisiana, for his thought to be dead wife could be here. Familiar. Here he discovers a tale of Logan Paul dying, which clues him into this not being a very nice place to be, but does not discourage him from searching it further. He actually does find his wife, just too bad that she's become part time fucking crazy. They are entrenched in a lover's quarrel, resulting in her dying like three times and him losing his hand. It is interrupted by some old dude who is now our father, perchance. Ethan is now part of the average countryside American nuclear family. Sadly, he immediately causes a very normal reaction by refusing to eat mother's beautiful Sunday supper. Lucky for Ethan, the doorbell rings just as the familial anger appropriate for someone not wanting their dinner reaches an apex. The family disappears, save for the probably very nice and certainly very quiet grandma. Ethan starts his exploration of the house to find a way out and find a way to save his currently slightly murderous wife. At least his hand has been restored, which seems like a slight wonder of modern medicine, and is confirmed to be an absolute wonder of medicine if you're unlucky enough to lose your leg to old Uncle Jack. Seems like American healthcare got an upgrade when I wasn't looking. Ethan makes acquaintance with a very nice cop man, who shall prove an invaluable ally. Oh no. We must fight off our pursuer. It is commit vehicular manslaughter or be vehicular manslaughter in these halls. Sadly, no manner of manslaughter leaves this man slaughtered for good. Even him shooting himself in the face only gives a momentary reprieve from him. We are also contacted by Zoe, daughter of the house, who seems to solely still have some of her marbles in place. She tells us to go collect the three doge coins to get out of the doghouse. Sure enough, Mad Jack is back already, and Ethan only quickly runs through this man infested area for a doge coin, the other one he gets from Big Clock. The clock lets him know that it is high time to venture into the basement, where very interesting fellows lie in wait. And the strategy here is to fucking run, because they are not much more than walking wastes of bullets. At least Ethan receives a key, which opens a door to a broken shotgun, which can be used to be exchanged for a working shotgun, Indiana Jones style, which from here on out will prove a handy companion for certain. At the end of the basement, an old friend awaits. Such a good friend he is, that we fucking kill him with a chainsaw. With the dog heads acquired, we are out of house number one. Our goal though, is not just to escape, but to find and ideally cure Mia. So the next stop is the insect infested old house, which reversal itself is not fun. No, that. That is better indeed. No slight problem here is the lady of the house, Marge Simpson, who is out to get us. I think she may actually have won the Insanity Olympics over Family Guy. I do not enjoy her company whatsoever. In this very auspicious place of the mansion, we need a lantern to tip a scale. Of course, we just fought a lantern carrier mere seconds ago, so we go back to gather it. What? We follow Marge to the greenhouse, where horrifying things take place. After exterminating more bugs and cream pieing the lady's crotch with a shotgun in flames, she is exterminated for good. We can go through this here door now, behind which it is mysteriously dark and suspiciously quiet. At the end of it, a grave or an altar? Who can say? All I know is that it is time to steal the girl's corpse's arm, for it is necessary. Sadly, this summons the SCP type beat mold creatures. Ready to meet up with Zoe, something unexpected happens. The third of three evil family members we know of has kidnapped her. She was nice enough to prepare a nice dungeon full of traps and mold people to stop us which doesn't stop us. He has also prepared a saw trap game, which we cheat on by watching a let's play of it beforehand. He was too lazy to change the password to a decisive part of the puzzle, meaning we can skip most of it, including the fellow's deathly trap. This has the hillbilly inbred psycho son so angry that he all the force out of the game and never shows up again, unless you play the DLC I guess. We are reunited with Mia and united with Zoe who prepares two doses of serum which costs an arm and a head. We are also reunited with Uncle Jack who's looking 
good, I guess. Well, he's definitely looking to kill us. But we are in luck, for he has the classic video game eye weak points all over his body, which we use to stop him. We do not stop him quite enough though, which is why we need to use up one dose of the serum to kill him. Due to this, we are faced with a dilemma which was tacked onto this game late in development, so I've heard. Save Ethan's wife, the reason why we're here in the first place, or this random lady, who to be fair did help us out a lot. This might be Stockholm Syndrome, but we're choosing the wife here for reasons of law accuracy. If you're curious what would have happened otherwise, Zoe just basically dies immediately. Then Mia also dies. And Ethan goes home depressed. This ending isn't canon anyway, let us disregard it. We escape in a boat, but there's always a bigger boat. And Ethan is stuck in black goop. So Mia must now venture through this big boat in a search for Ethan and the truth, which had been missing from her memory. Now the boat level is pretty boring, but it has pretty good environmental storytelling. Like this guy, he was definitely at Taco Bell last night. There's a strange child on the boat, name of Evelyn, who has history with Mia, as she soon remembers. Mia and some guy were on this boat to transport the girl, whose real identity is a bioweapon, who was programmed to be a girl. But things went haywire and she started turning people into blob creatures. She's vomiting. Yeah, that happened to my buddy Eric once actually. She wanted these two to be her parents, which they weren't ready for, so she settled for infecting them with the blob disease instead. Mia then fell out of the ship thanks to the King Crimson ass girl, lost her memories and would end up at the Baker estate. Back to modernity, she saves Ethan from the blob mass, knocks herself in with it. I don't know where we are, what we are doing, but now we must kill. There's not much nuance to the mines we pass through. Our arsenal of weaponry has grown to the point where we can go Rambo on these boys and some thick boys. And finally, Resident Evelyn. She only ever wanted to play house as a little girl. Sadly, she suffers from rapid aging, so she had to make do playing the grandma of the Baker family, who were all very nice people before they got infected by the Resident Evil virus. Except for Lucas, he just always enjoyed being a psychopathic dipshit. Ethan is entangled in a fight with the huge blob monster, which he is in danger of losing until true red-blooded American patriot Chris Redfield shows up with just the gun for the situation. The anti-blob monster thing gun. Ethan lives happily ever after with the woman who tried killing him a bunch of times. Chris still hasn't found a match for his sister and the Bakers can hopefully rest in peace or whatever. When one door closes, another one opens. But when one door opens, maybe it closes. Until it opens. If you're playing the original Resident Evil games, it takes a very long time for a door to open. But in the new games, it doesn't. This says a lot about society, I think, and the opening and closing of doors as well. Because when one door closes, another may open, but sometimes when a door is beat. <laughs>